what are the uh, sorry? <laughs> but how do we, we withdraw? Yeah. So uh, what do I mean about the validating bridge? So let's look at the rollup, and the, a rollup may look look like uh, just a blockchain, right? Like it's like a side chain to Ethereum, but it it has this one very important uh, important. Uh, thing that it connects to Ethereum in this very special way, uh, and it connects to the to Ethereum via this validating bridge, right? So when we zoom into the base layer to our Ethereum blockchain, uh, we can see that there is this smart contract, or rather, a smart contract system that's called uh, the validating bridge. And uh, yeah, Rollup has uh, Rollup is is working somehow with this validating bridge. Uh, so let's uh, zoom in a little bit more. We can see that our funds, our money that we put on the rollup from Ethereum, are sitting here uh, somewhere in this in this validating bridge in an escrow contract. And uh, if we enhance here, we can see that there is also some connection between the, the, what's happening on the rollup and uh, what the bridge knows about. So basically, we want to uh, rollup is is this uh, this validating bridge uh, just needs to be convinced about what is the current rollup state. So how do we withdraw from the rollup? Basically, what we, what we need here is we need this, this rollup data and uh, the state commitment. And uh, if we have the rollup data, uh, then pr we can prove to, to, to the validating bridge uh, that, for example, via, via Merkle proof, because the state commitment is just a Merkle root of the uh, of the um, of the state tree, we can prove to the validating bridge that we own some funds, and this bridge will uh, will release our funds to us. So, why are are those funds even at risk? Right? Like it's uh, this uh, diagram looks quite quite good here, and the answer is because of the centralized oper rollup operators, and. Uh, <laughs> This is uh, basically where most of the risk of rollups come from, but those systems are built in a way that uh, that should not allow the operators to act maliciously. So uh, let's 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 look at the first uh, at the first part of our of our risk framework. So this is state validation. What does it mean? Uh, so. What we want to answer in this uh, in this column of our risk framework is: Is it possible to find to find out if the state is valid? So I told you before that there is this state commitment, which is uh, a root of the state tree, and uh, this guy here in a mustache and a big hat, he is proposing the state. That's why we call him a proposer. And uh, uh, let's and the thing is that. Most rollups actually don't allow you to. Uh, I mean, rollups roll itself. That's the, that's the that's the idea behind a rollup. It won't allow you to to post invalid state because there is uh, this state. There are different state validation techniques. Uh, probably you heard about them. One of them is optimistic. One of them is uh, zero knowledge. I don't. I don't want to go into too much too many details about them uh, because the the thing is that this is the the oldest column of our risk framework, and uh, we are actively uh, we are actively trying to improve it, because even though uh, here we, we we show, for example, that zk proofs are not uh, don't bring any risk behind them, that's not really true because you have to trust the math. You have to trust that the implementation of the math was done correctly. There is no bugs, and uh, so we are now actively working on changing this uh, this column and to to make sure that we actually put the trust assumptions there and not the the technicalia we obviously look at the technicalia but we want to uh, make sure that users don't have to care about that the users basically want to know uh, what's what are the trust assumptions there okay so we have the state validation Thanks to the ZK math, thanks to the optimistic fraud proof game, we know that the state commitments is valid, right? Uh, so can we withdraw now? Not so quickly. Uh, let's look at the, the second column. This is data availability. And uh, what we want to answer here, the question we want to answer is, can 
we reconstruct the committed state. So uh, the thing is that the state commitment here, uh, it's just a root. So it's, it's a very tiny uh, amount of data that's representing ginormous state. The state can be a couple of gigabytes or, uh, but, and it doesn't need to be uh, held on Ethereum. Uh, but the, the question is if we can reconstruct the, the state so we can know the pre-image pre of the state commitment so we can put a miracle proof so we can withdraw, right? That's, that, that's our question. Can we withdraw our funds? Are our funds uh, still safe? And the thing is that if the roll-up data is posted on chain and, uh, and the validating bridge has uh, like, you know, few few lines of code that ensure uh, that the state commitment can only be posted if the roll-up data was, uh, was committed before, so we are good. If the, st if the data is committed on chain, is posted on chain, we know it's available, uh, but there is a drawback of that, right? Because the data availability on Ethereum layer one is quite expensive. So, uh, yeah, let's, tr let's not, maybe, maybe let's not, Post the data on chain, but let's just post it on some on some cheaper server, right? And uh, so we so we just post blocks on some cheaper server, and then tell our base layer that yeah, we have this data and it is available, right? Anyone can can look at it, and anyone can uh, can can basically uh, it it will be made available to anyone. But there is a problem with this solution because the thing is that. It's, it's putting another point of failure, and uh, it's here with, the, with what the sequencer is sh telling to chain. It's basically saying that, yes, I have this data, it has been available, but bas the base layer doesn't have a way of confirming that. And uh, basically, the moment that this data is not available to us, we cannot reconstruct the state, so we cannot withdraw because we cannot put the Merkle, Merkle root, uh, the, the Merkle proof of, of the ownership. Everything's burn, everything burns in a big fire, and uh, it's called a data withholding attack, which can be catastrophic. Uh, but so that's why it's very important that right now that the data is available, and right now the best way. Uh, of ensuring the data availability is posting the data on chain. Uh, right now, there is also, uh, we can also post it into data availability committee, which is basically the same as here, but uh, it's not one person uh, promising the data availability, but a multi sig so more people than one. And um, so it, it's still like, you know, yellowish gray area. There are other data availability solutions, and they are, they, are, they are actually on the rise right now. Uh, you, you probably know about Celestia, Avail is coming, New DA, uh, 4844, and all that cool stuff. If anyone wants to talk about that, I'm very happy to do that because we are currently working on evaluating those, and uh, that's my goal here on If Denver to, to learn more about all those data availability solutions. So. Uh, if you want to, uh, please hit me up, and uh, I'm happy to talk about those. But the thing is that right now, uh, we don't have good data avail availability bridges to Ethereum from, for example, Celestia. Uh, that's why we consider it red. And, uh, but yeah, hopefully soon it's going to change. Oh, not this way. Okay, so what, uh, what else do we have? Uh, okay, have you seen that? That was, sub that was subtle. So I lied to you on the very beginning. And uh, the thing is that the validating bridge, it's often upgradable, uh, as I say. This is not a single contract, but there is many contracts that hold some logic inside of the validating bridge that are actually upgradable. And um, yeah, who thinks it's actually wrong that those contracts are upgradable? And the thing is that I don't really think it's wrong <laughs> because, you know, Ethereum upgrades and if you want to have uh, a roll-up that is, uh, that is EVM equivalent, 
you will have to upgrade it after some time, right? Uh, so we just want to make sure that those upgrades are done in some very specific way that doesn't hurt, hurt users, and specifically, they don't put the breached founts into, uh, into more risk, okay? So that's the third column not of our uh, risk framework. This is called exit window. And I want you to think about exit window as basically upgradability with extra steps. Uh, so the f we want to think about the exit window is just a number. It's the upgrade delay. Uh, so we don't want to have instantly upgradable contracts, uh, but with some delay, for example, seven days, 30 days, with some time lock. But we need to subtract the permissionless withdrawal delay from that. Because, for example, with the optimistic uh, with the optimistic roll-ups, uh, it's, uh, it's always seven-day withdrawal time, right? With the casing era, there is always one-day withdrawal time. You, you, you cannot get it instantly. So uh, we need to make sure that uh, if, there is, uh, if there is a malicious upgrade coming, you can front-run this upgrade and withdraw uh, your funds. And uh, so, yeah, we decided on those, uh, on those days, we think that for 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 this for th that this exit window should be at least 30 days for uh, for a mature system and uh, less than 7 days is unacceptable it's a, there is no time for people to realize that and actually uh, try to do something about it uh, and the thing is that bugs happen right and uh, those ro the, those validating bridges th th those are some of the most complicated smart contracts that are on ethereum right now um, so there is a solution for that, and it's called Security Council, which is uh, basically a very fancy name for a multisig, but a very nice multisig. So we want to have a Security Council, which is a big multisig with high threshold, with uh, publicly stated people who are um, or, or companies who are uh, who are assuring that they will never use this uh, this power to to accept the uh, instant upgrade or, 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 or rollback, for example, or, or pause withdrawal, something like that, that, and they will only use it in case of, of, of possible bugs that can lead to stealing funds by, by somebody. Okay, so uh, two last columns are quite, uh, are, are more about liveness, but the first one is uh, sequencer failure. So sequencer is this guy on the top with a mustache. And the thing is that normally when we interact with the rollup, we, we, just, we just interact with rollup itself. And it, it is centralized, right? There is uh, one sequencer that's running a node and he's basically accepting those, uh, those new, um, those new state, th those new, every new, new transaction, he's putting them in arbitrary order. And he can, for example, censor you. Maybe he doesn't like you. Maybe, I don't know, you live in a different country. Maybe it's even illegal for him to accept your transaction because, uh, because you, are, you are censored by some other entity. The thing is that it, uh, it loses the censorship resistance. Uh, and, but there is a very elegant solution. You can do it yourself. You can interact with the base layer, with Ethereum, which is censorship resistant, right? That's, uh, that's one of the things about Ethereum that we love, that it is censorship resistant. And uh, you can basically send your own transaction to the Ethereum layer one to force the sequencer in some way to include your transaction. Um, so, and, and thanks to that, he doesn't even have, uh, th like there is no point for him to censor you, but even if he does censor you, then, uh, then you can force him to actually include your transactions. So this is very elegant. Uh, there are some technical differences between self-sequencing and forcing via a layer one. Uh, but, uh, but basically, most of the rollups, this is surprising, uh, actually have this, uh, this implemented. Uh, I mean, most of the top 10. Uh, but I, I will not go to, into technicalia, but, uh, but that's the general idea. You want to force the sequencer to, to include your transaction through interacting via layer one. Okay, and the, the last part of our risk framework is the proposal failure. So uh, the thing is that something can happen to a proposer. I don't know, he goes to jail, he loses his keys, whatever. Uh, and this is a liveness incident. So, so even though the sequencer is posting more blocks to layer one, uh, the, 
the, the sequencer is posting next blocks to layer one. The proposer is, is not being able to finalize them, to, to commit to them. And uh, basically, we cannot move with the rollup any further. And uh, basically, what's happening here with most of the rollups, they are just uh, creating, uh, they have this, this mechanism that if a proposer is inactive for some time, uh, it's uh, ranging from one day to seven days. Uh, this proposal role, so this uh, you know permissioned guy in the mustache with a big hat, uh, it becomes uh, it becomes an open role and anyone can do it. Uh, so this is self-proposing, and there is also a different uh, a, a different idea for the StarKex system and 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 loop ring, which is uh, which is actually quite smart because it's not. Uh, it's not reasonable to assume that people will be able to create the ZK proof. This is very, very complicated math. And uh, so what they are using is that, yeah, you need to basically reconstruct the state and prove to layer one that you own some founts, that you did on own some founts. So basically, if the proposer is inactive or is censoring somebody for too long time in StarKex, uh, you can just stop this system. And uh, it's being frozen, and it's, uh, it's not reversible. And the only way to escape, and everyone will have to do it, is to use the escape hatch. Oh, not this way again. <laughs> OK, so uh, this is all of our risk framework. And uh, you can sleep peacefully now. Uh, so if all of those things are green, hopefully in the future, obviously our risk frameworks also uh, includes bugs. But you should be able to sleep peacefully. Your founts should be sh should be safe. Uh, so uh, this is it in terms of uh, this uh, our risk framework, but a little bit of history. This is a historically inaccurate uh, ex picture of how these risk frameworks were created as uh, as um, internal internal work for MakerDAO of making sure that, that you know the that the chains that the layer twos that die is deployed are are safe and uh, this is how it looks right now right we have over 40 projects there is uh, 28 billion value lo total value locked uh, so if you are interested in that uh, we are hiring and uh, we are looking for uh, developers and yeah that's it from me I think we may have time for one question. Yeah, you, you have to shout. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if we can do it, actually. <laughs> it's, you are too far. Yeah, just hit me up afterwards. OK, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>